uh, Dane Arts Panel Review Session. Uh, we had our first session um, yesterday. Um, and this, again, this is the second one. Uh, again, officially welcome. Uh, I'm Rod Richardson. I'm the chair of Dane Arts. And not only welcome, but also thank you for being here. Um, we know that this takes time to um, to review the applications and it takes time to be here today. So we are most thankful uh, for you for you taking the time uh, to read and be here today. If we could start off with um, with introductions, that would be great. Um, since I don't know who's left and right, uh, Anna, can we start with you? Yes, I am Anna Gonzalez. I am the Community Engagement Coordinator at American Players Theater, and this is the second uh, review panel that I've been, I'm going to sit on. Okay, uh, Cara, you want to go next? Um, yes, hi. I'm Cara Yan. I am the Education and Outreach Director at Arts and Literature Laboratory, and this is the first uh, grant review panel that I'm sitting on. Great. Hey. Thank you. Erin? Hello, my name is Erin Woodard. I'm the Grants and Development Manager at Madison Public Library Foundation, and this is the second panel I've sat on. Okay. Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah Frank, and I'm the Managing Director of Opera for the Young, and this is my second panel as well, but it's been a few years. Okay. So we have a combination of of uh, those who are returning panelists, and I believe just one one new uh, reviewer. Welcome again, welcome all. Um, uh, as I stated, this is um, our second uh, panel re review session. Uh, we have uh, seventy six applications, I believe that's the number uh, total that need to be reviewed. Today we will be reviewing eleven. Um, again, uh, as as commissioners, oh, I'm, excuse, I'm sorry. Um, um, you, you all know Mark and Augusta already, right? Or do they need to introduce themselves? You know that already. Oh. Okay, all right. Um, again, we have a total of 76 applications. Today, we will be, be reviewing uh, 11. Um, we will spend about 10 minutes per application. That includes both the primary and secondary reviewer and the scoring as well. That might sound like a lot jammed into 10 minutes, but things seem to go uh, fairly smoothly, efficiently, and uh, most times we don't need the uh, entire 10 minutes per application. I I will serve as your uh, timekeeper, along with Augusta and Mark, and uh, the moderator uh, to keep things moving. Uh, one thing that I will not be able to do is to uh, answer any questions that might uh, well, my answers cannot be persuasive or influential in any way. So, uh, but again, we are here uh, to answer any technical type of questions. Um, uh, uh, so the way that this will work is I will call off uh, each of the applications uh, formally uh, by, uh, by ID number, um, the category and so forth. Uh, we'll ask the primary uh, reviewer to go first. Uh, after the primary reviewer has given um, 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 your comments, we'll then ask the secondary reviewer to provide any comments if needed. The secondary reviewer is not obligated uh, to provide any comments if the primary has provided the same comments uh, that you were going to share, then again, there is no obligation for you to share, to repeat anything, again, unless you um, uh, really um, want to. So after the primary and secondary have provided comments, we'll then ask you to score on the spot. Uh, after the scoring, we'll move on to the, to the next application. Um, we have allowed time for a break. Uh, so when we get to that point, you know, I'll, I'll ask, do, do you want to take a break or do you want to keep moving? That, that will be um, majority uh, rules on, on uh, that. Um, and after we finish, 
Uh, we will do a quick wrap up for you to tell us um, how you think things went, uh, any areas that you feel we can improve to make, to make the process better, more efficient, and so forth. Uh, any questions of us before we start? Bearing none, let's rock and roll. So our first application is ID number 25064, Arts and Education, uh, Madison Symphony Orchestra. The request is for $5,250, which is 8.88% uh, of their budget. And Anna, you are the primary followed by Cara. So Anna, you have the floor. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a Madison Symphony, Madison Symphony Orchestra's Symphony Soup program, which is for kindergarten through third grade students. Um, there are two performances that are held um, at the Capitol Theater. This is part of the Young People's Concert Series. And um, some of these, so the information we have is that, you know, they expect this is going to serve between 1,200 and 1,800 students in K through three public, private, and home schools in Southern Wisconsin. And um, they anticipate about 15 to 20 schools attending. And some of these uh, participants are also in the up close and musical school, in school residency program. So uh, I really liked the analogy of, you know, educating students about um, classical music uh, using soup. So soup, the ingredients that are all put together and helping students really get some, a lot of background knowledge. There's curriculum guides that are sent out to teachers to prepare students for the performance, um, to learn how all these different pieces of um, the music come together, such as soup. It's a collaboration of ingredients being brought together, which I thought was really clever, clever and creative. Um, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's has a $4 ticket price for those who attend. The uh, adults who chaperone can attend free. There's a 50% discount for schools uh, that have 35% or more of the school has free or reduced lunch. So um, there is some availability to make sure that, you know, there aren't really a lot of barriers in cost. I think it's a strong application. I like a lot about it. I think just as a former educator, I would have liked to have a little bit more information about the curriculum itself that was given to teachers. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, It's necessary, but um, I think this is definitely building a strong case for how they're you know, reaching out to students. I think that um, you know, it has a strong level of community impact. Again, I think the quality and the creativity of their approach is great. Um, the financial planning, the what they're asking for, the $5,250 is for, I'm making sure I'm getting this right, is for covering orchestra personnel. There's, um, yeah, I think there's, you know, ability to complete the project. There was a question I sort of had about the evaluation process of, because these students are so young, how they're going to really um, kind of get information about the student's experience as opposed to just the teacher experience. But um, I, I think, again, it's difficult because these are just younger students. They do mention something about in-person observations to sort of um, evaluate joy, excitement, engagement. Again, I'm not quite sure what that means. I would have loved some more information about you know what those observations look like or an example. But overall, yeah, I think that um, this is a, a strong project and I think that will be completed successfully. That's okay. it for me. All right, thank you. Uh, Kara, uh, you are secondary. Any um, additional comments? Um, <clears throat> yeah, most, I noted a lot of the same things. I also had questions about the, um, <clears throat> the form of evaluation and I also noted that observation piece. I find that a little concerning with regards to neurodivergent learners who may, their emotions may not be uh, readable simply from observation. Um, as a former educator, I also wanted more information about the resource materials and activities. There's a note that teachers can use those at their discretion, and I would be curious to have more information and feedback about how many of them do use those materials and whether they would like more or different materials. Um, I think the longevity of the program is compelling. I wonder what new things are being done to um, to update it and to engage new individuals. I will say having attended kind of recently a program that Kyle Knox, the new 
um, music director of YSO conducted for youth. I was incredibly impressed with how he spoke to youth. So um, I don't, I didn't feel that that necessarily came through in the application, but based on my experience, um, I think that he brings a lot of value to the project as someone involved in it. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, now at this point, we open it up to uh, the remaining uh, panelists. If you have anything that you would like to share, not not mandatory, but we open it up um, uh, to others if you care to share your thoughts. I, I have one thing yeah. I just wanted to add that I'm just kind of inferring from the project that um, from the demographics of the students that they reach, it's interesting because knowing the demographics of the Madison School District well, it seems like they might only be reaching some of the wealthier schools, which just kind of makes me wonder if more recruiting emphasis, this might just be a suggestion to, because I think the program's very valid and wonderful, of course, but um, maybe a suggestion to like spend some more time recruiting some of those lower income Madison schools and see if there's a way that you can incorporate uh, you know, and it seems from one of the letters of recommendation that they do help with funding, like for the, there was a bus um, that the symphony was able to, you know, bring for the school. So, I mean, maybe just a more of a recruiting emphasis on some of those lower income schools. Any other comments? The only other thing I wanted to add was that I thought that the letters of support were really strong and the, to, to the point about the busing that they gave uh, thought to the challenges that are currently present in the getting children to projects of this nature. So I thought that they were both strong letters of support. Okay. Any last comments from anyone? If not, I'll ask you to do your scoring, please. And I'll just chime in here. That's the part where if you go to edit your rubric, and then I think Mark is complete. There's a couple of clicks, but then you'll have that yellow submit button and it'll ask you, are you sure you wanna submit? And you can click okay. And this is our first time doing um, a full cycle with the brand new web grant cool. system. So I'm here if you have any questions at all with that, thank you. And Augusta, you will let me know once everyone has completed. Yes, I can do that. Just to be clear, so we should actually click submit review when we're done. Yes, please. I know I was like, don't submit before them. I said don't submit so many times. <laughs> so this is the time to submit um, the final review. So thank you. And then when we're done with the meeting, You'll be all done. You won't have to do any follow up. Yeah. Thank you all. So I did receive everyone's scores. Okay, great. Um, I forgot to ask, did each of you get your um, um, your full breakfast by delivered by DoorDash this morning, um, provided by Mark? Um, uh, apparently you didn't, maybe we aren't doing that anymore, but okay. A little early morning humor. Okay, moving right <laughs> along. The next grant application is ID number 25067. Uh, arts and Education. Uh, the organization is Girls Rock Camp Madison. The request is for $2,250, uh, which is 1.38% of their budget. And it looks like, Erin, you are the primary. Yes. Um, so this grant is for Girls Rock Camp Madison. It's a one-week day camp for girls, trans, and non-binary youth ages 8 to 18, where the campers learn an instrument, write a song, form a band, 
record a professional recording in um, a studio of the song they've created, and then have a rock concert showcase at the end of the week for the public. There are three sessions in June and July of 2024. The organization has been in existence since 2010 and um, regularly fills all of their camps. The goal is to present girls and their youth with the opportunity to learn and create music in a field that tends to be dominated by men. They have goals of empowerment um, and understanding the songwriting process and also being able to learn um, instruments without needing to know how to read a musical scale. Um, so learning through intuition, uh, all of the non-reserved spots for campers are filled for 2024 and the organization is currently filling the spots that they've reserved for campers from indigenous communities as well as the Black Girl Magic program. The grant is requesting $2,225 and the budget is partially funding staff and contractor stipends, as well as the Girls Rock Camp space rental and venue rental. Uh, I liked this grant application. I thought that it had a lot of strengths, particularly the um, attachments that were the musical pieces the kids created last year. I think it really demonstrated. Um, I was really impressed. It wasn't, I wasn't expecting that level of um, expertise or, uh, I don't know, professionalism. I, the music was really impressive. Um, I thought that um, another project strength was that the organization is ensuring um, more equitable spots for youth participation by reserving spots in their program. One of the things I would have liked to have seen is how many spots were being reserved and how much financial assistance was being offered. Um, just to have a better understanding of how that aspect of equity was was playing out each year. Because as a parent of two school-age kids, I know that camps tend to fill quickly and that there is um, a disparity in being able to um, be available when a camp is open and the, the registration time starts. So I would have liked to have more insight into how that worked. Um, I also thought that the um, program was popular. Um, they said that 50% of their campers are repeat um, campers and that they bring in new families each year. So it's clear that the community sees value in this. And they also provided strong letters of support. Some of the things that I think, in addition to knowing how the spots were filled in the camp, a couple other things I thought that would have enhanced the application were, um, Understanding why the Ladies Rock Camp was included in the budget, perhaps they were trying to give their whole budget as showing their entire organizational um, financial picture. But since the Ladies Rock Camp isn't a part of their ask, I thought that that could have been removed from the application and didn't pertain to the project for the kids. Um, I also thought that when compared to some of the other programs that were seeking funding, the number of students benefiting is on the smaller side. Granted, the number of students that are participating are also having a much more in-depth experience over the course of a week of camp versus um, a single afternoon at a performance. But um, I did think that, that there would have been some benefit to, to explaining um, maybe if there was more interaction with the people at the showcases, how those participants were also impacted. Um, I also thought that if the budget narrative section were fully complete, it would have added more to the application. Thank you, Erin. Uh, we do not have a secondary for this application, so I'll open it up to uh, everyone else if there are comments. Um, I'm wondering, did I miss, oh, they didn't include a video, did they? I didn't think I saw one, but I, I that would have been interesting to see. I think it was just the audio recordings from the, the G drive file they shared. Yeah, I think so. Um, I And as far as like applications go, I would say like another s suggestion for the organization might be to just choose one song or choose a couple songs or make a compilation for us 
because I don't know if that's allowed, but it is, it's really difficult to open up a folder with like hundreds of files and, and choose one. I would rather they just like put their best foot forward and, um, you know, and it doesn't have to be perfection. Of course, we're not expecting that. We just want to see like, like exactly what you said, the professionalism of those recordings. But that, that's overwhelming for me, especially when, you know, we have limited time to review these applications. Any other comments? Uh, I would just add, and I don't know if this is a little bit too nitpicky about, you know, the the what they're asking for with regarding contractors and staff stipends. I just felt that was a little, I wasn't quite clear on, on what that was about. Um, again, I think just a little bit more information about is this primarily contractors and a little bit staff? Um, and if it is for contractors, like, you know, what contractors are they in the range? Because they do really emphasize the importance of making sure that people are compensated for their time, especially musicians who are volunteering and, and being able to create careers out of this. So, again, it's a very small thing. I think it's a great application. I think it's a great program. It's just a question that I had that I didn't really feel like I could find an answer to in the application itself. Okay. Any other comments? Bearing none, if you will score, please. Rod, I received all the scores. Okay, great. Um, just let so you know that once you, once all the panelists have have done their reviews, uh, your scoring will then be plugged into a mathematical mathematical formula, um, um, which would give us the range of suggested um, award amounts. Then uh, those numbers will be reviewed by the executive committee of the commission, and then it will go to uh, have one final review by all of the commissioners in April. So that's the steps that we will take after um, after uh, each of the panelists um, do their thing. Um, okay, moving right along, our third application is 25072, also arts and education, Benjamin Fritz, Request is for $3,650, which is 28.19% of the budget. And Sierra, I guess you are the primary. You're on mute. Yeah. Okay. So this is for uh, American Players Theater. They're. Um, their student matinee performances of um, Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing and King Lear, and then Nathan Allen Davis's Nat Turner in Jerusalem. They'll perform for approximately 3,000 Dane County middle and high school students. They have post-show discussions, study guides, and accompanying workshops with the APT teaching artists, and those are provided to complement the theatrical experience. Um, that's something really awesome that I thought about this this application in particular that they offer these free workshops with their teaching artists where they go into the schools and help prepare them for the matinees that's such an essential part of you know being a an audience member at one of these professional performances um, another thing that really stuck out to me because the concept of course is is so well known to all of us in the arts of you know taking your students to wonderful classical performances um i love that they are not only incorporating the two classical theatrical pieces and that they also have like a new a new a new piece for the students to learn from so that they know that you know like great theater is always being produced and created um and then the, the teacher newsletter I thought was really great that they get that out to the 
the schools that they serve. And then the letters of support from the community on this application were really strong and they showed what a great impact these performances have on the students. Um, otherwise, I thought their budget was very straightforward. And I think that's, yeah, I thought it was overall a really well rounded application. Okay, thank you. Anna? Uh, I recuse myself as I am an employee of American Players Theater. Oh, okay. Didn't I? Can I, I get, think were we were we actually reviewing the um, Benjamin Fritz? I, I thought that I have. Yeah. yeah, I'm the secondary for the Benjamin Fritz, yeah, which yeah. is what I have yeah. in mind. But again, I'm happy to whatever we're talking about. But no, no, yes. no, no. Okay. Since you are an employee, yes, you should recuse yourself. Um, okay. But I thought that okay. Uh, uh, Augusta, I thought that. Oh, am I on the wrong one? Sorry, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, we are reviewing Benjamin Fritz. So, yes. yes. So, okay, so you're not an employee of Arts and Lit Lab. Oh, we're on the Arts and Lit Lab. Okay. No, no, Excuse no, no, me, no, no, I was no, talking no. about the APT one. I was no, 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 out of no, order no. here. No, 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 no. I had in my notes that you were going to recuse yourself from the Arts and Lit Lab um, review because you are associated with art and lit lab but you are employee of of uh, of apt yes i am okay. um so oh. yeah i'm recused mm -hmm. from the apt application okay. all right okay yes so we, we have well, i presented on the right application right yeah oh yeah yes yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah, we yeah. actually yeah. no we have to i think we will come back to apt I, the one we actually should be reviewing is benjamin fritz what um two five oh seven two okay i what? then i'm on i'm on two five oh six five so excuse me so should i talk about this the snow white one then the post-production yeah let's do that we'll just go in order with benjamin okay. fritz then going forward but yeah that's totally fine yeah. and then okay excuse yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. Sorry. yeah yeah okay uh okay we want my, my rubric Okay. Okay, this is the film festival one. Um, all right, so this is for uh, Snow White. Um, it's a short film that uh, was created already, and it's going to go to festivals until August 2024, and then it's going to be uploaded to the CFAM YouTube page for free forever. Um, they, this, so this is primarily for editing of this project that has that already has taken place. So um, Snow White is a Children's Film Academy of Madison's second college crew series production with a cast of youth from Dane and Sauk County and Rockford, Illinois. Um, it was directed by UW Whitewater senior Ryan Kucha on location in Spring Green, Wisconsin. Um, so the company in general is really innovative. There are not many organizations that serve young filmmakers and people who are interested in going into that career path. So um, they're kind of filling a void by starting this film academy here in the area. Um, it's dedicated to being a place for creative exploration. Um, and so this project in particular, they are requesting funds for their 15 minute short film Snow White to complete the editing. <clears throat> it was, um, I was trying to see when it was completed, but um, in 2023, yeah. So they'll, Um, so there, there was a couple problems with the application. The creativity and innovation tag um, area was left hanging. I think they either um, it got cut off or, or in the editing process, maybe they just um, hadn't completed that section. Um, and then also in the budget section, the budget was sort of reiterated below the Dane Arts format. And as a reviewer, I think that's a little tricky for me to try to parse through, um, whereas we get into the ease of reading through the Dane Arts format, I find it a little confusing to see things listed again in their own manner. Um, but I did love the idea of giving youth experience in this essential industry. I mean, there's so much work to be had in the video production 
world and um, you know making it available to youth and and making it possible for them to work on on that is great. I also really enjoyed their um, attachments. I thought their one of the videos of the pirate of the pirate movie was great. So, all right, that's all I got. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, I, I agree with everything um, that's been said. I liked um, the creativity and I think, you know, there's definitely um, the community impact for, you know, it's rather small for the students themselves who are participating, but I don't know if there's a lot of other opportunities to get this much hands-on experience. So I think that's really great. Um, I loved the inclusion of <clears throat> information about the editor, the sound designer, the colorist, you know, where this money is specifically going to help with the post-production. I, I really appreciated that level of specificity. I also thought in the application, you know, I think it's great that they do address that, you know, that they are hoping to, you know, they understand that they're not going to get ticket sales from this. They're, you know, going to be in the film festival and then just go up on YouTube. And I think that, um, they can sort of talk about the reality of like using this current production to sort of move to future funding. I, I would have liked more information about that. I, again, I agree the supplemental materials are great, but I would have liked to maybe have in the supplemental materials more information from the students themselves who participate in these projects. Um, we got some great letters of support, but I think specifically for this application, it's not, there's the qualitative, you know, um, things that we can share are going to be more impactful than sort of like the quantitative, like this is how much money and this is how many people review it, especially because these young participants may not get opportunities like this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's rather difficult to measure, but I would have liked to see something because I can see the value in this, but I'm not sure that it comes across. Um, it could come across stronger, maybe, let's say, if they had those sort of things um, included in the supplemental materials. Okay. Any other comments? Bearing none, if you would do your scoring, please. And again, we are scoring 25072 Benjamin Fritz. All reviews have been received. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Our next application is 25078, again, Arts and Education. This is a Madison Reading Project. The request is for $3,100, which is 40.52% of their budget. And Sarah, you are the primary. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the Madison Reading Project is. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. It's yeah, definitely yeah. not spelled like Cara. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the Madison Reading Project is a nonprofit. It has been a nonprofit since, obviously, it's been a nonprofit since 2014. And um, let me just slide through my many pages of notes. Here we go. Um, their proposal is for summer reading books and art inspiration kits. Um, the proposal is a partnership with countywide neighborhood centers, and um, it is in line with their mission of programming to engage children in differentiated literacy arts and cultural activities designed to create a love of learning and building and reinforcing age appropriate skills. Um, they align their educational materials with those of local school districts, which I think is beneficial in supporting the work that's already happening. One thing they do that's really great is that they eliminate some transportation barriers. They have their own reading bus that they bring to different organizations. Those organizations include family shelters, neighborhood centers, libraries, after-school child care programs, social services organizations, and schools. They have a very lengthy and impressive list of um, programs and locations that they bring their programming to. 
Um, as such, they are also able to serve large numbers of underserved populations. Um, they mentioned serving 33% Latin audiences and 20% Black. Uh, their measurables of their project are also impressive. In 2023, they note that they safely delivered more than 118,000 sanitized books to over 84,000 children. Um, for me, the things that uh, were weaknesses and that I could have used more information about primarily had to do with the more educational components and the value of providing children with these books that they, and they are theirs, they get to take them home. Um, and the experience of the reading bus I have seen myself is really a really enjoyable and novel one that I think kids really, really adore. Um, the mention of the materials that families can bring home to support these art kits and the art kits themselves, I would have liked to see more information about that. Um, all art projects are not created equal. So I really would like to know the content of the projects that they will be sending out with the books um, and who the individuals are who are coming up with the curriculum for these art projects. Um, furthermore, when they mention the art supplies, that can just cover a really wide range of things. So I would have, I'm a former elementary school art teacher, and I would have liked to have had more specific information on the art kits themselves. Um, I have no doubt that any art um, connected with literacy is valuable, but I think there's really a range of value that the, that can take. Um, and I think the last thing I noted was um, just curiosity about the engagement with families. They mentioned the use of a lot of volunteers. And I'm wondering about engagement where families are not um, English speaking in their home or not English language learners first, um, what, the, what form the instruction materials take? Are they printed in multiple languages? Are there video links? Just really more about the projects themselves. Thank you. Erin, you're up. I agree with um, everything that Kara just said. I, my um, only additions are that the project estimates it will serve 500 children. I think that pairing it with the art cart programming is a helpful way to tie in additional art work. That's only a portion of the, um, the programming that will occur, but I thought that that was a nice tie in to um, arts programming in the community. Um, I thought that if the pictures submitted would have shown some of the artwork that or the kits that were being used that would have augmented the application because the documentation that was shared was just of kids reading. Um, and while I do think that pairing high interest books with art projects is a fun way to get kids excited about reading, I would have liked to have known more about the art aspect of the project. Thank you, Erin. Anyone else? Just to follow up with yes to those comments about the art kits themselves, I would have liked more information specifically for me around accessibility. If we're thinking about um, the range of you know students or young children who may be participating, you know, is there a consideration taken into you know the materials, um, making sure that there's a wide range of opportunities for students based on what they're able to, you know, do as far as small motor is concerned. It's similar with the evaluation um, process. They definitely make a strong point that evaluation might be difficult and they use the word intrusive for participants. I, I like that, that they're, you know, they want to just sort of let these families have their experiences, but there is reference to using anecdotal information from volunteers. And so I, I like that they're sort of saying, you know, we're going to have this be sort of our evaluation process, but I think the more specificity around that would have been in, important to include. And I do like Carr's previous point from another application that got me thinking about just accessibility when you're trying to use anecdotal information, if you're talking about um, children and families who may be neurodivergent, how are you assessing sort of the positive impact on them? Thank you. Anyone else? Bearing none, let's score, please.
Thank you, everyone. So all scores have been received. Okay. Our fifth uh, application is 25115. Again, Arts and Education, Monona Terrace Community and Convention Center. The request is for $1,000. Uh, 5.5% uh, of their budget. And Sarah, you're up. Okay. This is the Monona Terraces Lakeside Kids. Um, it's a program that provides cultural and arts-based play activities that bring visual and performing arts to children ages four and up. Lakeside Kids is free to the public and it says it's enjoyed by families of all income levels. Um, it takes place at the Monona Terrace and um, in the, it's on, I think like Tuesdays in the summer and on uh, days when the weather is bad or like last summer with some of the um, air quality alerts, they're able to move inside and use the, um, the interior of the Monona Terrace. Um, so they're able to adapt to the weather and, and conditions. That's great. Um, it embodies an, an innovative approach to community engagement by providing enriching cultural and arts focused play activities. Um, so they try to create a dynamic space for exploration and creativity. Um, so they hold significant merit in its commitment to offering free cultural and arts focused play activities to the public and by making it free they remove the financial barriers that would keep people from participating. Um, so yeah, it is on Tuesday mornings and um, they try to create a routine of engaging cultural experiences. So a lot of times um, it's uh, whole programs like uh, care programs that bring their students or camps and then um, it also said that uh, a lot of like homeschool families and and um, summer families come as well. Um, so it seems for they have uh, some surveys that are sent out afterwards. Um, I, as always, I know it's really tricky to collect information on how these things are received beyond just like anecdotal and like uh, you know, observing the ways that families are enjoying uh, this type of programming, but they were able to collect some some great uh, responses from the families. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Some of my comments that I had listed were uh, just that this is exactly the type of like interactive outdoor pro programming that brings families to Madison in the summer. Um, you know, people can depend on on having something fun going on downtown and, you know, that'll bring, you know, lots of families into the downtown area and then they'll also probably partake in other things as well. So um, I love this kind of a free program for the public. Thank you. We do not have a secondary reviewer for this uh, application. So I'm op opening up to uh, the rest of the panelists. Any comments? Bearing, going once, going twice. I can, yeah, I can oh. say something oh. very quickly um, yeah. just to support uh, everything that Sarah said. I would say uh, this is a great program. If I had to just pick, again, just wanting even more detail would be getting information about those community partnerships, those performers, the variety. Uh, there are a couple of pictures. When I went online to look up this program, I was able to see sort of the virtual 2021 um, presentations. But I think, you know, to make an even stronger application, you could provide a selection of participants in the past, even if you don't necessarily know who's participating this year, this coming year, just again, to sort of amplify those community partnerships and that how you're introducing these communities, these cultural, uh, these artistic events to, um, to young families and young children, I think would just, again, help an already strong application. I know video is so expensive, but I feel like video is so essential for so many of us nonprofits now. Like if you could just get a really great video of like some of your artists during the summer. And, and like you said, Anna, that is another one of my notes that I wished we had like a selection of like, here's who we've had in the past, even just like listing like who they've used the last five years or something. So we get a kind of smattering of what this upcoming summer might hold. 
Yeah, I agree with that. And I found one of the letters of support to be the most informative source of information on the past performers. I wish that was foregrounded um, and supported with something like video a little bit more. Thank you all. Any final comments? Going once, going twice. Would you please score? Thank you, everybody. We've got your scores. All right. We're doing very well on time. Our next um, our applicant is 25142, again, Arts and Education. This is from the Madison Jazz Society, Inc. The request is for $4,970, which is 27.86% of their budget. Aaron, you are the primary, followed by Cara. Okay, so the Madison Jazz Society application is for a jazz residency program that's been in existence since 2017. Madison Jazz Society partners with educational institutions, including MMSD, um, UW-Madison School of Music, and other Dane County Schools Arts Education Departments, and art organizations, including Art Lit Lab, and, and supportive media um, channels like WART and individuals to create and promote jazz education in area schools. They have four different programs as a part of this residency um, program. The first is school residencies, which uh, places jazz artists right in the schools um, where they teach about history, culture, and provide hands-on music experiences. Um, that is one of the things that they're seeking funding for in this application. And then they have another opportunity called Madison Jazz Jam and Workshops, a third called School Grants and Network, and then a fourth called Community Jazz Education. Through the residency program that they're seeking support for um, with this grant application, they would fund one elementary school residency one middle school residency, one high school residency, and then five high school mini residencies, uh, which would be carried out in a variety of different music classes. So choir, uh, orchestra, et cetera. Each residency's student learning objectives are expressed in terms of the Wisconsin Academic Standards for Music, um, which MMSD further defines by grade level. In the proposal, each host teacher identifies the standards and grade level benchmarks that they will be addressing during the residency. The Dane Arts Grants will partially cover these residencies. The organization has identified other funding sources to offset the additional fees. The budget, uh, I thought, nicely explained the expenses and the grant is asking for $4,970. The strengths of the application were um, I thought that the music education being aligned with grade level standards and helping further um, the work that's already being done in the classroom, mm -hmm. incorporating the teacher uh, into advanced instruction ahead of time. Um, each residency will culminate in a free public performance. Um, so they will be sharing their work out with the public. The organization has vetted their pool of professional jazz teaching musicians and goes through a pairing process with the selected schools. Uh, I appreciated the single day mini residencies to further expand the number of children that would be exposed to the program. Um, the grant application had well-defined goals um, and it also 
outlined how the organization works with a program consultant to compile uh, information and assess the impact of the project, which I thought gave a lot of consideration um, to documenting their overall impact. Uh, they had strong letters of support and additional supporting documentation. Um, the only weakness or uh, area where I would have liked more information is that the application said that the organization works with the MMSC Arts Education Coordinator and teachers in Dane County to identify teachers who are interested in having a residency. Um, I think it would have been nice if there was maybe an open call for interested schools um, to solicit more participation. Thank you. Cara. Um, I don't have much to add to that. I um, liked to see the involvement of Shabazz High School mentioned because I feel like that doesn't um, often come up anecdotally in discussing secondary ed around here. Um, I My other questions were also about um, locating partner teachers, and it seems like there might be a handful of um, teachers who are very heavily involved, and I wonder what efforts are being done to include more new and different um, schools and individuals they haven't engaged with before. Uh, my last question would be about the time commitment for the artists in residence. Um, the stipends on their own look reasonable but I you know it's important to pay our musicians and artists fairly so um I'd like a little more info on that but otherwise I think it's really valuable and I the letters of support were very compelling thank you Gower anyone else going on Sarah I, I would have loved to see more uh, again an awesome program and the way that they've got it set up I, I'm just interested to know more about their teacher planning like how that actually happens and like some sort of I mean some, maybe something in the supplemental materials that outlines that a little bit because um, teachers are so inundated in general it's it, it's interesting that it's so teacher-led that they really have to like work together to develop the program because uh, often I think that's difficult for teachers to dedicate that kind of time. So I would love to know more information about that and how that process happens for them. Okay. Last call on comments with this application. Bearing none, if you would score, please. All right, we have all the scores. Excellent. Okay, we are doing, again, we're doing really well on time. Um, we had allowed for a break um, after uh, this um, uh, review. So I'm asking the question is, do you want to take a short break or do you want to continue and push through to the end? That's your call. Don't all go at once. I'm fine to keep going. Is that the consensus with the group? Since I, since I don't hear any objections. Sure, yes, yes, yes. Okay. We will continue. Um, the next application then is 25-143. Again, Arts and Education, Simpson Street Free Press. They're asking for $1,500 and it is 10% of their uh, budget. And Anna, I guess you are the lead. Yes, all right, this is Simpson Street Free Press. This is uh, for their Wear in Dane County series, which is their signature product. 
Um, they are working with uh, students um, and arts education programming to help the students become writers, editors, columnists, um, and sort of in, in help them connect the community, writing about arts, local history, that kind of thing. Um, it's a after school ex uh, program working with young reporters to explore areas of interest to the students. And then they're working together to um, write uh, and then publish their pieces. There's about 200 local kids they say that they're working with. Um, they're extending the student day. Um, they're definitely helping the kids sort of access information about science, history, books, arts. And then um, they're tying it into this um, process of actually creating something for public publication. They, I really liked that their model is to work with the editorial staff, which are college age students who are SSFP grads who are then sort of helping current student editors and writers. These are middle school and high school students who are filling all these positions. And then the adults are sort of just helping support that program. They go on field trips. Um, students are able to write about what interests them. They go to museums, art galleries. They write about uh, outdoor sculptures, historical sites. And then the pieces themselves are written in English and Spanish, depending on the writer, which I really liked. I thought that was really great. I think they're really helping students sort of understand how a newsroom works. Um, they're having students help and support each other as mentors and, you know, sort of the mentees, which I think is great. They say that they use a lot of peer to peer editing and they're sort of using seven traits as a writer as part of their curriculum to sort of create the content. And then that you also have the, the students or the kids who are reading these publications. So I think the impact is, is just really neat. I, um, I liked the, this application. I thought it was great. I thought, I think it's an awesome program to sort of help students who may not otherwise have an opportunity to participate in something like this. The only thing that I was just a little bit unclear of was around the budget itself when they're asking for that $1,500. They're marking student stipends and the teen editor stipends as yeses to be covered by this amount. But as I understand it, if they're not, if it's not covering the full amount, it should be marked partial. I don't know if that was just clicking the wrong box sort of thing. I don't know if that's big of a deal, but um, that was just the one thing because when you're putting um, those two things together, then there's sort of supply or then there's the, the field trips, which is a parcel amount. So I'm just, I wish I wanted to make it clear that they're fully covering the student stipends and the teen editor stipends with that $2,200. And then the field trips would be partial amount, which doesn't match up with the 1500 request. But again, I, I don't know how important it is to decide to make it yes versus partial. And then the only other suggestion would be in the supplemental materials to maybe have an example of an article written in Spanish. I just think that would be a really great way to um, help show the student work that can cover um, both English and Spanish. But otherwise, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's a great program that would definitely have a positive impact on students. Thank you. Karen. Um, I agree with everything that's been said. I thought that it um, the application had a lot of strong information, and I wished that the applicant and background section would have spent more time talking about the history of the organization um, and their goals and major accomplishments, um, because the history was really lacking for me. Um, another part where I had a question was, they mentioned that as a writing a writing and literacy organization based in lower income neighborhoods, um, they didn't mention where or whether or not lower income children were specific specifically selected to participate. Um, so I thought that a little bit more information about that would have been helpful. Um, and I agree that the budget narrative could have been more complete to explain um, better explain how the funds were going to be used. I thought that the sample writing was really strong and um, I enjoyed seeing all of the pieces, um, the writing in the pieces themselves was impressive. And I thought that that really added to the application. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, guess not. So if you would score, please. Sort 
Thanks, everyone. We've got your score. All right. Uh, our next application. Uh, now, just to be clear, Kara, uh, this is the one that you are recusing yourself. Yes, the Art and Lit Lab outreach one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just make a note of that uh, in the minutes. So this application is 25166, Arts and Education. Uh, again, it's Art and Literature Laboratory. Uh, the request is for uh, $5,240, $5, which is 13.3, I'm sorry, 13.22% of the budget. And uh, Anna um, falls on you. Yes, sorry, I'm just organizing all my notes. All right, so yes, this is Art and Literature Laboratory. This is for their youth arts programs. Um, there's a variety of programs that are covered in the outreach programs that are covered in this application. There are just the general youth art programs and indigenous arts programs, LGBTQIA plus um, seniors, and then partnering with community programming. So um, this is, I think, a really strong application that's covering a lot of broad things. Um, I don't necessarily think that's it's a problem, but there is um, a lot of pieces to this, which um, it kind of just speaks to art and literature laboratory and all those sort of different things that they do to help um, provide a lot of different programming around the arts. So there's the Queer Youth Storytelling and Arts Program, which is open to LGBTQIA plus and allies. It's um, a really great attempt to sort of work, have students work in collaboration with teaching artists and partner organizations in this writing program. There's also the Seniors Program, which is partnering with Newbridge, Madison, and the Madison and Middleton Senior Centers. Again, it's just saying a variety of programs, including a senior sewing class and um, two sections that are specifically for Spanish speaking seniors, which I, being led by a native Spanish speaker, which I thought was really great. There's an indigenous arts class program that is prioritizing native youth um, families, but it is open to others. And then they also kind of talk about other programs that they have. I'm just trying to make sure I have the pathways for parents. Um, it's just one example of these sort of collaborations that they're working to build with community partners. So they are offering classes and workshops that are free or low cost um, through this outreach program, just to ensure that all members of the community are able to have what they put termed art-filled lives um, by removing the barriers which prevent particip participation, which I think is great. Um, they definitely are focusing on amplifying, you know, voices in the arts of those who maybe are underrepresented or don't ne necessarily have those opportunities to for mentorship um, and examples of, you know, working with artists who, you know, look and are like them, which I think, again, is really great. The um, the what they're asking for in the budget is to cover the teaching artist fees and then anything remaining will cover the art supplies. There's a you know strong outline of what the plan is. Again, I, I think it's a great program. I think it covers a lot of things. There's just a lot of you know workshops and classes that are covered by this. Again, I would just like spe specificity, um, examples of who they partnered with before, previous programs. They do um, a great job of sort of giving a lot of detail about the Pathways for Parents program and what's involved with that. There are some pictures about um, of previous classes, which are great. But again, I would just love to see, you know, which artists you're working with in the past. Do you have any examples of curriculum? Do you have any sort of completed art projects or maybe um, showcases of the students who participate in the work that they've created? But again, Again, I think that's just additional detail to uh, an application for a program that has a lot of really great positive impact in the community. Thank you, Anna. Any other comments? Since we don't have a secondary, any other comments from the group? I also yeah. really, I, I loved the Pathways for Parents program and reading about that. And I it in general kind of overall in the application i did sort of wish that it was for like you know focused on like one or two of the programs or maybe like just the programs that were in the art and lit lab and then maybe like a separate application for the programs that were outside of the lab um not that it really matters but when you're reviewing so many applications i think when multiple programs are included in one it just gets a little convoluted for the reader um but i mean amazing programs and wonderful work being done here. Anyone else? Then I will ask you to score, please. Let 
All right, we've received your scores. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have three applications left. Uh, I'll ask again, anyone want to take a break or let's push through? Push through, okay. Application number 25101. This category is local history. Uh, presented by the Dane County Historical Society. The request is for $2,800, which is 50% of the budget, and it looks like, uh, Sarah, you are the lead primary. Thank you. Okay, so this is for um, a, a, like a traveling exhibit um, the on racial land covenants, and it says in the abstract that they were an insidious legal tool that prevented millions of African Americans from accessing the American dream how sales were restricted by race by inserting a single sentence into a land deed. Um, find out more by visiting the Dane County Historical Society's traveling exhibit at a location near you. Um, I think this is a really neat application. They plan to, um, they're going to build an exhibit and then they'll use the Dane County Library System um, to, to have it travel through the county. Um, there is really a lot of great careful planning on how they'll put together these five double sided retractable banners. Um, so the research is, you know, well outlined in the application and um, it seems as though it's like a very um, manageable project for the Dane County Historical Society. Um, also a really valuable piece of information to be sharing with the community um, throughout Wisconsin, especially it's it's a history that needs to be shared. So um, great that they're taking on this project. Let me just look at, I have to open up my scale to see my notes. Um, yeah, I thought the budget was um, very reasonable. You know, it's an, in, it's an inexpensive project that will hold great community impact, hopefully. It's difficult for them to measure, of course, how many people will see it, but you know they can assume that people who are coming in and using the library will you know, at least view and, and get the abstract of the information. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I just want to second what Sarah had said about the application itself being really straightforward about not having clear data on how many people will participate or how many people will engage with this exhibit. I don't think that distracts at all from the value of this project. And I just wanted to say that I really appreciate them, including that in the proposal, to being transparent as possible about that information because they do, it's very well researched, it's very well written. And again, there's only so much information you can have. And so again, I like the thoughtfulness of just them amplifying that they are aware of that. But again, I think that this will absolutely have a, a, a really strong impact, which is I think makes it a very good application. I also like that this is portable, so it can be easily moved around to many locations and used for a long time in the future. So it has durability. Um, and I thought that the letters of support showed a real strong partnership with the Mapping Prejudice Project um, and the um, Dane County Boys and Girls Club. So I thought that those were real strengths for this application. Any other comments? Bearing none, let's move forward to the scoring, please.
All scores have been received. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Our next application to review is number 25065, uh, Arts and Education, uh, American Players Theater. And I believe, uh, Anna, you are going to recuse yourself. Yes. Is that correct? correct? Okay. All right. We should make a note of that in the minutes. Um, Again, APT, the request is for $5,250, which is 2.46% of their budget. And Erin, you are up. Um, this grant will help fund APT's uh, student matinee performances of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing in King Lear, and then Nathan Allen Davis's Nat Turner in Jerusalem. The plays are scheduled to take place in September and October, and um, the application ultimately indicates that workshops can be observed um, with arrangements made with the organization's education coordinator. APT is also providing post-show discussions, story guides, and accompanying workshops uh, with APT teaching artists um, to complement the performance. The project uh, will benefit interested schools and their students across Dane County. Uh, and the APT has begun reaching out to area schools this month and will be booking school groups starting now. The plays will occur in the following school year and the workshops will be provided two to three weeks after the season wraps. Uh, APT estimates that 3,000 people will be served through the grant and the grant funds will partially be used to cover APT's educational staff expenses and then artor, I'm sorry, actor, director, designer, um, artistic fees. The ask is for $5,250. Uh, the strengths that I saw in the application were that it reaches a large number of students and they're from across the county. The additional educational curriculum helps round out the experience for the students. Um, the post-show discussions and study guides and workshops really um, give the students a chance to experience the play intimately with the artists who put it on for them. Um, let's see what else. There will be 15 to 30 of those workshops in Dane County Schools. Um, the organization itself is um, accomplished and nationally recognized, so they, they will be, the children will be receiving quality theater productions. Um, there are scholarship tickets available upon request for schools with a high percentage of students who qualify for DPI, free and reduced meal programs. And I thought that the letters of support were really strong. The things that I thought would have added to the application were a little bit more information about how the schools were selected and um, how that application process worked. Um, and then I thought it would have just added to the application to have some kind of summary of past survey results, um, although that wasn't specifically asked for in the grant application. Okay, hey, thank you, Erin. Sierra? Yeah, I agree with I agree with everything you've said. Um, I really do appreciate those in school workshops that are provided with the APT artists ahead of time. I think it's great for them to get in and, and help the students prepare to be great audience members. Um, and like I said before, I love that they're incorporating um, new theater along with some of the more classical theater offerings so that students, you know, schools have a choice between going to see something, you know, that's old theater and something that is, you know, really relevant and newly produced and created. Great application. Yeah. Any other comments? Then yeah. if you, yes, yes. Sorry, I just wanted to add, I thought it was some really exciting programming. Um, all of the supplemental curriculum materials for teachers, I thought were really well done and the 
um, letter of support from teachers um, indicated just how many levels that curricular instruction is happening on. It's helping in so many different and innovative ways. It's great to see it happening in other parts of Dane County besides Madison. Um, I was curious about, it looks like the population served is very, very largely white, but maybe that is the population of those surrounding towns that the, um, that the organization is working with. That's it. Any other comments? If you would score, please. Thanks, everybody. You've got your scores. All right. Our final application for review uh, is 25106, Arts and Education, Opera for the Young. And I believe, Sarah, you will be recusing yourself uh, from this. We'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, again, Opera for the Young. The request is for $5,250. And um, Anna, I guess you are the lead and the sole reviewer. Yes, I am. All right, this is Opera for the Young. This is a 24-25 countywide school tour of Magic Flute. This is going into um, schools, public schools. Uh, it's a fully English production um, in these school performances. And the students work as designers to create artwork for the hallways and the performance space. Um, they also have uh, residencies, that uh, 25 performance residencies. They really work to make the story, the plot of the play accessible. They've sort of reworked some of the characters to make sure it's clear for students what's going on. I really, really love that the students are a part of the performance, that they're provided with singing and speaking roles to collaborate, um, and the residents are collaborating with the students to make them actually part of the production, not just seeing the production. Um, they're teaching materials and curriculum to help support the student understanding um, leading up to the production, which I think is really great. The, the amount that this requested is to cover the, the in, let's see, the, our, the artistic contractors and the production contractors. I, I think this, again, is just really well done. It's really, I think, creative. Um, it, I think it has a strong community impact. I do like how they're incorporating materials and activities to integrate with um, students who's, who have English as a second language. I think that's really nice. Um, I think that they're sort of working with tutorial videos for all the program to really, they really center the student understanding and learning to make sure that students are able to sort of like really be prepared for this performance, which I really like. I um, would say just um, the inclusion of the video, I really liked, I know what's come up in, you know, when we've been talking about these different applications, I recognize it's probably a little bit difficult to sort of pull together and include, but I think it really helped including a video in this supplemental material because it made it extremely easy to understand how the students are participating in the performance. It's one thing to sort of have it very well written out. It's a strong application, but just that visual of being able to see how the students sort of support and work with the artists, I thought was great. So uh, overall, I think this is a good application that anticipates and then answers a lot of the questions that may have come up. And I think, yeah, it's going to have a, a great um, impact on the community and have no doubt that it'll be completed uh, successfully. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, going once, going twice, would you please score?
All right, we're all set with scores on that one. Wait, uh, we can have Sarah back because that we can ask her to come back. There we go. All right, Thank um, you. that concludes um, this panel session.